Well, hi. Hi, everybody. Um, happy Zoom Day. Uh, as, as you just heard, my name is Joel Mabus, and uh, yes, I, I am called a folk singer. And what that means is I, I play all kinds of music, really. And uh, what I'm going to do today, though, is um, uh, spotlight uh, songwriting, because that's a lot of what I do. Uh, sometimes I just sit and pick my banjo and play an old folk song, but uh, I'm going to do some folk, some songs that I wrote. Do you want to call them folk music or not? I don't care. But uh, I'm just going to start off with one of mine from about nine, ten years ago. Uh, it goes like this. <laughs> Now way down yonder, down in the cotton patch, bottom land, where mosquitoes hatch, a lightning and bug, who's cutting a rug, dancing all around like a drunk with a jug. I said, hey, little firefly, don't you have better fish to fry? He said to me, wherever I be, I gotta let my little light shine, so shine. The little light you got to shine into the night. You gotta take off the lid. I'm telling your kid, what's the use of glowing if you're keeping it hid? Shine, make a night of it. Shine, don't be fighting it. Turn it around. Love can be found, but you gotta let your little light shine. <laughs> One rainy night down in New Orleans, Jackson Square, by the river bend, a man with a drum was making it hum, beating out a rhythm till his fingers were numb. I said, hey, nobody's listening, call it a day, why don't you pack it in? He said to me, wherever I be, I gotta let my little light shine. So shine, the little light you got, shine. And through the night you gotta take off the lid, I'm telling you kid. What's the use of glowing if you're keeping it hid? Shine, make a night of it, shine. Don't be fighting it, turn it around. Love can be found, but you gotta let your little light shine. <laughs> seems to understand what you do. You're singing your part, alone in the dark. Well, don't you know that everything starts with a smirk? So shine, like a chandelier shine. Light it up in here, let them all see. Wherever you be, you gotta let your little light shine. <laughs> You gotta shine into the night. You gotta take off the lid. I'm telling you, kid, what's the use of glowing if you're keeping it hid? Shine, make a night of it. Shine, don't be fighting. Turn it around. Love can be found, but you gotta let your little light shine. Turn it around. Love can't be found, but you gotta let your little light shine. Uh, yeah, so that one, uh, you might have guessed, is, is called Shine. Um, <laughs> it, 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 that reminds me of, of uh, I'm going to take my glasses off here so I don't get lots of reflections. It's a sunny day here in, in uh, Michigan and the sun's coming in some windows here. Uh, yeah, Hank Williams, you remember Hank Williams from uh, long ago, the, the original Hank Williams, not the junior. Uh, back when he was uh, a hot item back in the late 40s, early 50s, he wrote a little book on how to write songs. How, how I write songs and you can too, something like that. And his first rule was pick a good title. Okay, that's rule number one. Rule number two is repeat the title a lot. <laughs> so if you listen to any old Hank Williams songs, you can see he took his own advice. 
And uh, of course, he, he had more than that going for him, but uh, that that's rule number one and two. So I'm going to talk a little bit about songwriting in, in terms of my process. And um, and I hope uh, uh, I, this is called the food for thought lecture. Uh, food for thought. I'm going to give you some food for thought. Maybe you're creative in other ways. Maybe you uh, write poems or, or short stories or novels. Maybe you paint. Maybe you, maybe you try a, a sculpture or or whatever, uh, knitting, gardening, you're creative. I think you might get something out of the creative process that I go through to make the, a song the best I can make it. And, uh, and maybe you'll, you'll glean something out of it, even if you don't get a fig for music. So we'll just see how it goes. I'm gonna do another song here that um, is of a completely different character than, than Shine, uh, but they have something in common uh, in terms of how they came to be. Um, let me get going here. time has come to get things figured out deciding what is what and sadly what is not when all the famous people are forgot it will be me and you and what we do it's all that really matters after that. Back when I was Johnny on the spot, when rosy fingered Dawn spread her diamonds on the lawn, and the grand ideas were served with tea and jam, and there was you and me things to see. The world was simply just as big as that. But time is swift and time is soon. The setting sun, the rising moon, twirling planets, keeping time with every blow. Counting hours, counting years, all the troubles and the tears and the joys that melt away like April snow. As for all of that, where did it go? If you remember, let me know. Right now, I'm simply happy to be here. what and gladly what is not when all the famous people are forgot it will be me and you and what we do it's all that really matters after that
It's all that really matters after that. Okay. So that, um, excuse me while I get a sip. Uh, that is called When All the Famous People Are Forgot. Nice long title. I repeat it twice. And, um, you know, I, I, people say, well, what's that about, Joel? It isn't obvious to me. Uh, well, maybe you hear it a time or two. You see that it's about the passing of time, perspective of age, uh, maybe looking back with, uh, on, on things years gone past, a way of meditating on time and what it does to us. And, uh, well, where'd, how'd you get to write that? Well, here's what that and that first song I did, Shine, have in common, is that the music put its feet in the door first. People ask me all the time, Joel, what comes first, the words or the music? What do you do first, the music or the words? And the answer to that is yes, something comes first. But it could be the words, it could be the music, it could be any little bit. In the case of um, this last one I just did, it was that. It was that little little phrase at the beginning. Then where do we go from there? Just change it a little bit. And then we proceed. that worked out. It took me, took me a little while, a few days maybe, to work that out on the guitar. And I thought, well, uh, I'm not going to leave it as an instrumental. I want to have some, I want to have some lyrics. So, um, da, 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 da. when all the famous people are forgot, that's the first thing I thought of was when all the famous people are forgot. I was thinking about, you know, well, tonight there's going to be the Emmy Awards on. And there's famous people on television. And I bet you in five years, about half of them will be forgot. And news for you, you and me, we're going to be forgot too, even if we're not so famous. Uh, but there comes a time when things do move on. That's what I wanted to get in this song. And, uh, and, I, and I won't expound any further with that. But the music inspired me first. And the music not only has a melody that you sing, but it has... Music has a, an emotion to it. That, ha that sets a mood. That, that's the platter upon which the words sit. Okay, the words set on that, that platter that I offer you, and that's the song. Now, the other one, Shine, uh, boy, it had a whole different sound, didn't it? I'll tell you where that came from. I, 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 uh, I dipped into the folk music tradition there. I, there's an old uh, Texas fiddle tune. There's a, there's a tradition of uh, fiddle music in Texas that's it's based on contest players. Uh, there's contests in the summertime, and the best fiddlers get together and see who wins the contest with a panel of judges. And uh, it's been going on for... <laughs> scores of years, uh, 50, 60, 80, 100 years, this has been going on in Texas. And they've developed some traditions. One of them is the, the backup. You get, you get to take a guitar player on stage or maybe a piano player, but it's usually guitar. And they play get Texas style. Those chords, some call them uh, uh, swing chords or orchestra chords, they're, they're blocks. 
a little percussion in there, and chuck, boom, chuck, boom. And I, and I said, well, let's write a song on that. The, the first bit of, um, of that fiddle tune. <laughs> It's a guitar version of a fiddle tune. It's a it's a five part tune. There's five pieces of music that long, and most most people, unless they're really into fiddle tune music, can't even listen to that stuff. It's just as a friend of mine who, who's a picker like me he told me he says, and people that don't aren't into this music, all they hear is deedle 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 deedle. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's probably right. They all go deedle deedle deedle, don't they? Uh, but I, I use little snatches of that. I use that first, and then the uh, the um, for the chorus, I took a little sampling of the um, fourth part. Uh, now, when I start singing it, I leave out half of the deedle deedle deedles because you can't sing all those notes. But the overall frame of the melody comes from that. That tune is called Cotton Patch Rag, by the way. If you ever want to look it up, you can Google that Cotton Patch Rag. It's Norman Solomon's version. A man who died long ago, but he recorded a, a record in the, uh, about 1960 and uh, put that down. That's where I learned the tune from. Um, but uh, and then both of those courses that and uh, uh, gave me an idea from which to want words. Now, let me start with the words. I'm getting a little feedback uh, coming in on me. I'm going to plug in my uh, earbuds so I don't hear anything else. There we go. Um, what if you want to start with words? And, and here's a song that uh, I wrote uh, just a couple of years ago. And uh, um, uh, it was started from a, a little phrase, uh, a phrase you've probably all, all heard one time or other in your life. Um, I was watching television and there was some hearings, <laughs> hearings on TV all day long. And it was senators screaming at each other, just shouting, shouting and screaming at each other. And at one point, uh, there was a senator from the South, a well-known senator from the South, who uh, was just turning red as a beat. His, his head was about to explode. He was so angry. I don't know who he was angry at, but he was angry at somebody else, some other senator there. And he pointed his finger, his crooked little finger, he pointed it and he said, there's a special kind of hell for people like you. <laughs> and I heard that on, you know, on TV and everything. And, and I said, hmm, wonder what kind of hell that would be. <laughs> special kind of hell, you know, something special. And, and the little songwriter part of my brain said, okay, keep that. Think about that. And uh, I started thinking about what kind of hell a really bad person would find. Okay. And that brings to this song. So you think you got away with it. You think nobody knows. You're the smartest person in the room. That's what you're thinking, I suppose. Well, there will come a reckoning. That's why I'm here to tell. They building you a special kind of hell there's a special kind of hell for folks like you for all the things you've done and those things you plan to do there's a hundred little devils just waiting in a line sharpening their pitchforks to stick in your behind burn brimstone by the ton to hide your smell down there in your special kind of hell 
There's a special kind of hell for bums like you. You'll be drinking kerosene, eating polecat barbecue. Your roommates will be crocodiles, snapping at your toes. And smelly little rats will be nibbling your nose. And they got bagpipes playing out of tune as well. Down there in your special kind of hell. Oh, there's special kind of hell for crumbs like you. You'll get lectures every hour from the old friends you have screwed. Exfoliating warthogs with a toothpick and a spoon. Licking clean the backside of a very sick baboon. And that's just one of many games they play so well. Down there in your special kind of hell. There's many more surprises I just don't have time to tell. Down there in your special kind of hell, in your dismal yet artisanal kind of hell. <laughs> so, when I do that in front of people, I see some hands clapping there. Um, when I do that in front of people, I say, "Now, pick somebody you'd like to dedicate this to." <laughs> <laughs> There's no end of, of public figures you can dedicate this to, uh, and it can be your own little special person. That's fine. I didn't. I wasn't naming any names, but um, so there I had uh, the idea and a, and a phrase, special kind of hell, and I had to have do a little. Um, I wrote all the words first, and then put the music in later. I had an idea it would be be a simple little skippy skippy little tune. <laughs> But um, uh, uh, where, where, where writing, writing songs takes you, if you're writing in a traditional format with, you know, rhythm and rhyme, you know, <laughs> all those things you learned in poetry class in, in high school start to echo in your ears when all the famous people are forgot. It's iambic pentameter. What do you know? Uh, uh, but but rhyme and rhythm. So here's a little tip: if you if you want to put your hand at writing a song, you get the words you know you're going to use. You're, you're pivoting words. In this case, I wanted to end every verse with, "They're building you a special kind of hell." Hell, L has a limited number of words that will rhyme with it, and and I used uh, most of the good ones. In that song, well, uh, smell, <laughs> uh, but I don't like to use this, the, a rhyme word more than once in a song to keep it fresh. And the other one is you. Uh, uh, luckily, there's a million words that rhyme with you. Uh, do, to, you, crew, stew, <laughs> there's a million of them. Uh, but uh, even the best songwriters will sometimes resort to a rhyming dictionary. Uh, for years, I didn't use a rhyming dictionary. I thought it was a cheap trick. Um, but I found that it, it really does open up ideas just to pick, a, pick a, a word and find all the things that rhyme with it. You'd be surprised how many rhyme. So find a good rhyming dictionary. There's some online and you can um, have a leg up on uh, mm. scratching your head. My, my uh, dear friend, uh, Peter Berryman, who sings with his ex-wife, Lou Berryman, Peter and Lou Berryman, he has a little writing room up in the attic of his house. And uh, for rhyming, he has, he's also a graphic artist. And he's written a very nice, uh, around the, down the edge of his room, he's written a nice alphabet. And, and he has, uh, you know, a word like dog, he'll say, dog, cog, blog. Frog, you <laughs> go through the alphabet and think of all the things that it might be. I, I've done that too. Um, so, it, so that's uh, uh, one of the mechanics of songwriting. When you have an idea 
and you want to express it. It will be the same in a in a lyric poem. Now, poetry, if, if you've taken some poetry classes, you know that rhythm and rhyme uh, went out of went out with buggy whips, you know, for, for serious poetry. Um, you don't just you don't do that anymore. No, no, that's doggerel. Well, it's also songwriting. Uh, you can you can write a song that doesn't rhyme at all, but it's 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 a rare song that doesn't that 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 is memorable enough that that you actually have heard it. Yeah. Uh, there's something to the English language though where rhyme and rhythm helps you remember and, and expect and, and enjoy the language all the more. So it becomes a bit of a, a word game. I want to give you a song that's an example of a story song. Now maybe you have a story you'd like to tell in song. And in country music, of which I'm very fond, you may have noticed a little twang as I've been singing here sometimes, grew up in the southern uh, tip of the Midwest down in southern Illinois where um, mid, uh, southern Illinois is this little um, wedge-like portion of the state that's wedged between uh, the Appalachians and the Ozarks and uh, so I have mountains around me, mountain folk on all sides. But uh, I, a little twang and, and this, this song also takes it to, to a twang and I'll just sing it for you and then tell you how it came to be maybe. Um, need to put a little clamp on my guitar to raise the pitch. Okay. Well, it was late one night in a roadhouse saloon. The band coming off of the stage With my favorite hillbilly singer Still good, but showing his age I said I got all of your records And if you don't mind me bending your ear I'd like to know what you're drinking Said, you can buy me a beer. I asked him, what keeps you going? You sing your heart out night after night. He took a long drink and then he answered. He said, son, I'd be telling you right. He said, sometimes you sing for the money. And sometimes you sing for the show. And sometimes you sing to the pretty young thing with a big smile in the back row. Sometimes you sing because you're lonesome and you need the crowd and the cheers. Sometimes you sing for your supper. Sometimes that's only the beers. And sometimes you sing for the memory of a love gone awfully wrong. Yeah, sometimes you sing for the money. Sometimes you sing for the song. Well, I asked him where next he was headed. He said, son, I don't rightly know. Some joint a whole lot like this one. Just a ways further down the road. He said the boys in the band handle business. They just take me along for the ride. A wore out hillbilly singer. Then he finished his beer and he smiled. Wrote me a 
his name on a napkin. Then he left with a tip of the hat. And here it is all these years later. I'm still remembering that. On those nights when nobody listens. And this old guitar just don't want to play. I remember that hillbilly singer and the things that he had to say. Because sometimes you sing for the money. And sometimes you sing for the show. Sometimes you sing to the pretty young thing with a big smile down in the front row. And sometimes you sing because you're lonesome and you're needing that crowd and your cheers. Sometimes you sing for your supper. Sometimes that's only the beers. Sometimes you sing for the memory of that love gone awfully wrong. Yes, sometimes you sing for the money. Sometimes you sing for the song. Yes, sometimes it's all for the money. And sometimes it's all for a song. Well, thanks for putting up with that length of that. It's a long one. Um, but it's a story song, and it takes a little time to tell. That's called Hillbilly Singer. Now, you might say, now, Joel, we're not supposed to, to use words like hillbilly when talking about other people. And, and, well, I tell you, I got a right to be, to use the hillbilly, the H word, hillbilly, uh, because my parents uh, were both professional hillbilly singers, professional hillbillies. <laughs> That's what they called country music in the old days. I'm sure some of you remember that. Uh, uh, and it was nothing wrong with it. It was just hillbilly music. That when Hank Williams died, they said that the America's greatest hillbilly singer died. The New York Times was saying that. They called him a folk singer and a hillbilly. And that's what he was. If, if you don't mind using the, the vernacular. Now, if you say ver hillbilly with a, with a sneer, you know, and, and putting someone down, that's a different thing. But... A hillbilly singer is something uh, I aspire to be on certain days. And now the story, I've had, had people ask me right after that, stand up in the, in the audience and say, now, who was it? Who was the hillbilly singer? We want to know. Well, sorry, they're, they're, uh, that, that, it's, it's not uh, uh, a page out of my journal. I wrote the song with two characters in mind. There was the character named I and me, and that's not Joel, that's, that's the guy who's singing the song. It could be anybody singing the song. And, and the hillbilly singer, it could be anybody. Now, how do I come to a song like that? Well, I've been doing this for, I've been out, out on the road for 40 years until this summer. <laughs> no road for Joel this summer. Uh, but out on the road, and, and, and uh, in the, especially in the early days, I was an opening act for, for great uh, musicians. And, um, and, I, and, and almost every one of them is a story in itself. Uh, 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 as many of those stories, I can't repeat in polite company either. I'll tell you one. Uh, early, early on, when I was still in college, there was a college uh, presenting organization. They called it a coffee house, uh, but it was in, a, in th this particular time, it was set in the Michigan State University Union Ballroom. And boy, it was still the ballroom back then. They had the, it was just it was all decked out like the old days. And I, I was there for three nights, two shows a night, 
doing the opening act for one of my blues heroes, a man named Lightning Hopkins. I got to spend backstage six shows in total with Lightning Hopkins. And uh, he was a, quite a character. Of course, he was, he was an old man. He was probably in his 60s, just like I am now. But uh, he was holding court to all the youngsters, all these college kids who were at his feet. So backstage, he, he could say anything he wanted, and everybody was just, it's Lightning Hopkins. And here's, here's one I remember. He was drinking a beer. Someone brought him some beer that he could enjoy behind the stage. And he said, it's not the taste of beer that I like. It's not the taste at all. I really don't care for the taste of beer. But it's the feel of the can in my hand. And when it gets light, it don't feel right. Why don't you uh, get me a heavy one? <laughs> Which uh, I've never forgotten that one. Couldn't put it in my song here, but uh, Hillbilly Singer. Uh, uh, now, you saw the, 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 the advertisement for this show. It's called Better Voice. So, um, yes, indeed, I have a song uh, called A Better Voice, and uh, I better sing it because this, this show is uh, what it's all about. Now, this, I better sing it for a number of reasons. Uh, for one is, um, this has a connection with uh, uh, Down East Maine because that's where I, I wrote the bulk of it. That's where I started it, and I and, uh, uh, got the inspiration for it on a trip to New England and I was in uh, in Maine uh, for Thanksgiving with uh, my family my my sister who is actually listening I'm one of the one of the little uh, things up on the top of your screen and she's uh, she's living in still in Maine and my brother has, lives a little further down the coast and uh, how they wound up there is a long story, and I can't go into it. But after they had both settled there back in the in the uh, 70s, my mother, who had retired and was uh, living alone in southern Illinois, uh, went out to live uh, on the property with my sister. She got a nice mobile home, and, and I went, I visited there many times. She lived out there for a number of years, and she, she, uh, she always said, it's like living in the woods. It's so great. She always wanted, she grew up on the prairie, you know, and trees are something special. You know, a farm has one or two trees and lots of land that just spread out forever. Uh, so living in among the trees, oh, she really liked that. But um, I'll shut up and sing the song for you. Sometimes I wish I had a better voice To sing my song for you A voice so gentle, sweet, and clear Soaring and gliding through the air Hanging the melody in your ear The way good singers do My voice cracks like a back porch chair, growls and groans like a big black bear, full of whispers, kinks and snares, and I sometimes miss the key, but nobody sings my song like me. Sometimes I wish I had a better life Like the folks that's got it made Wearing fine clothes and making the scene Tooling around town in a big limousine No ifs or buts or in-betweens Got all my aces played But I get by from day to day 
Make a little less money go a long, long way. If I ain't got much, at least I got my say about the way things gonna be. Cause nobody lives my life but me. And sometimes I wish this was a better world. And I was a better man. Taking the chances and giving my life to feeding the hungry and leading the fight. Shelter the homeless, turn back the night and do every last thing I can. But I'm no saint, I'm faint of heart. Too weak to run and too slow to start. But I'll pitch in and I'll do my part when it comes around to me. Cause nobody loves this world like me. Sometimes I wish I had a better voice to sing my songs for you. A voice so brilliant, strong and clear, soaring and gliding through the air, placing the melody in your ear the way good singers do. But my voice cracks like a back porch chair, growls and groans like a big old bear full of whispers kinks and snares and i often miss the key but nobody loves this world nobody lives my life and nobody sings my song like Beautiful. A better voice. Now, uh, I got to tell you a little bit about how, how that, the genesis of that. Okay. Yeah, I wrote it over Thanksgiving, uh, after Thanksgiving dinner, uh, sleeping on my mom's couch in Maine, up in Cherryfield. And it planned the whole song out. I didn't have my guitar in my hands. I, I knew kind of how I wanted it to go. But uh, the, uh, the weekend later, I was back down in, in, in uh, Massachusetts, out in Cape Cod or somewhere playing in coffee houses. I worked on it a little bit more. But how I came to write it, I was driving out to New England uh, the weekend before Thanksgiving. I had a gig, uh, I think it was Passim down in Cambridge. And, and I'm, I pull into Boston area and I turned on my car radio. This is about 1989 way back then, turned on the car radio uh, because there's, there were so many stations that played folk music and came in, in Boston at that point. And, and the first thing I heard was uh, uh, an old uh, colleague of mine, a uh, friend, I, I knew him friendly, I know his brother a little more, uh, Stan Rogers was singing one of his songs, the late great Stan Rogers, singing one of his maritime songs. You know, Stan Rogers, some of you might know him or remember him. He had, uh, he was a big man, every bit as, as big as I stand, and, uh, and uh, he um, had a voice just so deep and rich, and he didn't give any backpedaling on his voice. He just sang it loud. And he sang these bold songs about people doing wonderful things and daring things and, and dramatic things. And, and he just sold every song with every ounce he had. And I said to myself as I listened to his song on the radio, I wish I had a better voice. I, and and the, the little songwriter in, was, lives in my brain said, hmm, that might be a song. 
and I and I forgot about it until Thanksgiving came up, and you know I had I had a lot of turkey in my belly, and I had time, and it was dark, and I started thinking about what am I thankful for here? What what do I have to be thankful for? Well, I wish I had a better voice, but and there there came the song. Thereby came the song. So that song is, is more or less an, an essay. Uh, and gr some great songs are essays. They, they tell you uh, what we think about life, things, a, a subject, whatever. And uh, in that case, the word I did mean me. Sometimes I write a song where the word I means somebody singing the song. Not necessarily 